You're listening to the anointed sounds of Bobby Beautiful Music. Release your musical tracks. When we read the Bible, we touch on this main topic, giving. We give because we are funding a rescue mission. We believers have been recruited We have been commissioned to rescue the lost. So we need to raise money to find our lost, treasured, adopted brothers and sisters. They're lost, but God has a plan and he's gonna use us instruments to retrieve his children who are better known as the first fruits. The harvest is ready, meaning the first fruits, they're out there. They're waiting to be reaped. But the laborers are few. A lot of prosperity teachers like to milk Malachi chapter 3 to serve their own selfish interests. And, you know, it's so sad to see churches exploit the members to serve their selfish appetites. And they live lavishly at the expense of these poor people. But anyway, we're gonna see that grain, corn, and wheat represent the righteous, and the tears and the weeds, the chaff, those items represent the wicked. So I'm gonna be very quick. I have to pick up my son in like 10 minutes. First fruit harvest is ready. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. But since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But in but each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. When you enter the land I'm going to give you and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. Hmm. Jesus is the first fruit of the dead and he rose from the dead on Sunday and that's why they weighed this sheaf the day after the Sabbath. And this is dating back to Leviticus chapter 23 verse 9 through 11. Look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You are slain and with your blood you purchased the, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. And he who sits in the throne will shelter them with his presence. You see, when we are not in the sheltered presence of God, we're naked in shame. We're naked in our shameful desires. We're naked in sin. We're naked in this fallen nature. But the moment we're clothed in the glorified presence of the Lamb and our Father, we are confident, we are secure. He's been our safe dwelling from eternity to eternity. But now, since Adam and Eve rebelled, we have been separated from the counsel and provision of God. But thankfully, He's dressed some of us in salvation, meaning he has sweet fellowship with us. He takes good care of us as any father would for his children. So you're going to see again that in Luke chapter 3, verse 17, his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire, grain, corn, Wheat, first fruits. You see, when we go to Malachi chapter 3, we're talking about tithes, but it wasn't money. It was, it was uh, the, a tithe 
of their harvest, their crops, and they fed the Levites who had no possession, because God declared that I'm going to be their possession. And this was actually returning a favor to Abraham, who gave a tenth to Melchizedek. So, as a result of him giving a tenth of his goods, Jesus, our Father, our Holy Spirit, decided, hey, we're going to give back to Abraham by supplying the needs of the Levites who at the time were in his loins when he gave the tenth to, to him, who is Melchizedek. An offering also is not money alone. When we go to Malachi chapter, I believe, one, people vowed to give a, a lamb, but then they gave a lame, crippled, or injured lamb. And that didn't represent Jesus, but people who were greedy did it anyway. So this is what he says. This is Malachi chapter 1 verse 13. When you bring injured, lame, or diseased animals and offer them as sacrifices, should I accept them from your hands, says the Lord? Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable lamb in his flock and vows to give it, but then sacrifices a blemished lamb animal to the Lord. For I'm a great king, says the Lord Almighty, and my name is to be feared among the nations. You see, the, the tithes are also will represent us. You remember? I'm going to bring the grain to the threshing floor and I'm going to clear the grain from the, the tares. Just the way he said in that parable, I'm going to separate the sheep from the goats. So this is what God is saying. I have a plan and this is a preview. You know when you go to the movies and there's a preview, but it's not the main attraction? But this is so exciting to see this preview because it's pointing to a promise that's going to come to pass. So we're the first fruits. We're not only just redeemed servants. We are joint heirs with Christ. We share in this inheritance. And he's going to make his presence a shelter to us. We're going to be in that safe dwelling. No more gossipers. No more murderers. No, no, more, no more tension. No more strife. No more divisions. Just peace. Shalom in the secure rest. This is the Sabbath rest that he is talking about. The new heaven and the new earth where we will be in secure homes. You understand that when we're not in the presence of God, we're insecure, we're in fear. But the moment we're in his loving presence, whenever his shelter, whenever his presence is our shelter, whenever his presence is our clothes, we are safe and secure. I love you. It's so difficult to understand the Bible when you're in the dark. But when the Holy Spirit enlightens you and shares what, what is shared with Him, you're going to be so enlightened. You're going to be like, wow, this is what it's all about. This is beautiful. So I love you once again. God bless you. And continue to share the good news. Because this life is fleeting. As you can see, got gray hairs. It's going to be gone in the blink of an eye. So, please, please continue to take a journey through the scriptures, eat and drink God's words, and I kid you not, you're going to sense His presence in your heart. That's the greatest gift ever. Amen. Watch the gap, getting on and off your train.